Today we're hosting a blood drive at the Gurdwara Sahib and we're also doing CPR and AED training as, long, as well as um, blood pressure checks. So every spring and fall we do blood drives here. We bring in a van from the Massachusetts General Hospital and people can either sign up beforehand or they can walk in and it's really easy. Almost anyone can do it as long as you're over 16 and 110 pounds. Um, you can't go to India within the last year but other than that it's, it's a simple process. Um, a lot of people uh, do it. We have a great turnout every time. So we hope to continue this every year. Hi, Blair. So um, I just wanted to ask you like, um, about CPR training and like, how do you uh, demonstrate to people? Good, yeah, this is hands-only CPR, which you just call 911 mm -hmm. and start the compressions. If you think someone's in a sudden cardiac arrest where they just collapse, you tap them, call their name. If they don't respond and they're not breathing, then that means our heart stopped. So, uh, and I'll show you in a minute how we're just gonna do the compressions and call 911 and wait for the uh, uh, emergency medical re response. Okay, so um, why do you think this is important for people to learn? Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death and 70% of them happen in a home where there is no one else around. So it's important that everybody know how to do at least the basic skills mm -hmm. so that in the case of a sudden cardiac arrest, doing the compressions greatly increases the chance of survival. And so if everybody knows exactly what to do in the case of a sudden cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. we're gonna save lives. Okay, so do you think like um, anyone can learn this? Or Absolutely, it's easy to learn, it's easy to remember, mm -hmm. and it's something anybody can do. They just have to recognize the symptoms and then do the right response. Right. And, uh, and then, because what we're really doing with this is we're getting blood to the brain where the brain cells will die without oxygen. So blood to the brain means we're saving brain cells so that when this person's heart is shocked back in the rhythm, mm -hmm. their brain can operate and they can survive. If we don't do this, then they're not gonna have a very good chance of survival. What's the rate of blood cell death? So uh, it's, you only have like a 5% chance of survival if you don't do anything in a case oh, of sudden cardiac arrest. It's a very hard thing to survive. Mm -hmm. And so performing the CPR greatly increases the chance of survival. The mm -hmm. sooner you start and the better the compressions are, the more likely this person survives. And, uh, and we have all kinds of stories of people that learned how to do CPR and then performed it in an emergency and saved a life. But when nothing's done, it's very hard to survive it. Okay. So do you mind um, showing us a quick demo of how you yeah. do this? Yeah, so again, if you think someone is in a sudden cardiac arrest, they just collapse. Mm -hmm. They're not breathing, they're not responding, you call their name, then that means their heart stopped. Right. So the first thing you do is call 911 and stay on the phone with them or hand the phone to someone else so that uh, they can help with the process too. Okay. So you're gonna put this person flat on their back on the floor. We're doing it on the table just for demonstration. Put the heel of your hand right in the middle of their chest, mm -hmm. right like that. Put the other hand on top. We're gonna lock your elbows. We're gonna, and then we're gonna push as hard as we can, about 110 times a minute. Okay. Think of the song "Stayin' Alive" by the Bee Gees as a good beat to remember. Yeah. And you're gonna go all the way down, all the way back up, and you gotta keep doing that. In fact, uh, you just gotta keep doing that until either help arrives or until you can trade off with someone. Because what you're doing basically, as I said, is squeezing the heart, pushing blood carrying oxygen to the brain, mm -hmm. so the brain cells don't die. So what if you like break a rib or something like? You could break a rib, but they can fix a broken rib. What they can't yeah. fix is brain cells that are dead and will never be replaced. Okay. So yeah, you can break a rib. The closer you get to the middle and the more accurate your compression point is, the less likely you are to break rib. But a broken rib probably means you're pushing hard enough. Uh, there's no liability. This is a uh, Good Samaritan law protected action. So mm -hmm. if you do this and someone decides to sue, they can't because you are acting in good faith. Okay. Um, if it's a smaller person, you're just going to push as hard, maybe one hand, a child. Yeah. If it's an infant, you're just going to use a couple fingers. But it's the same idea. you got to push hard enough to squeeze the heart to get mm. the blood to the brain. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Yeah, it was a really good demonstration. Thank um, you. So this is the instance where you think somebody's in a sudden cardiac arrest, where they just collapse. You tap them, call their name, they don't respond. They're not breathing, or they're not breathing normally, they may be gasping for breath. If those two things occur, that means their heart stopped. So the first thing you gotta do is call 911 and stay on the phone with 911 uh, or hand it to somebody, but make sure that 911's on the way. If you're someplace that might have an AED, an automatic external defibrillator, you see them on the wall with the heart and the lightning bolt through it, send somebody for it. Even if you never used one before, they're made for people that never used them before. As soon as you open it up, it'll walk you through the steps and it'll tell you exactly what to do. 
They're foolproof and they are essential to saving this person's life. So if there's one around, send for it. So now you've got 911 coming, you've got an AED coming, but you can't wait for either one. You've got to start the compressions immediately. So put this person flat on their back on the floor. We're going to put the heel of your hand right in the middle of their chest. Put your other hand on top and pull it back so you have a really concise pressure point right there. You're going to lock your elbows, use your whole upper body, and you're going to push as hard as you can, two inches down, all the way back up, about 110 times a minute. The Heart Association tells you to think of the song Staying Alive by the Bee Gees because the, that's the beat. And you just keep doing that until either help arrives or until you can trade off with someone because this will tire you out after a few minutes. Um, what you're doing basically is you're pushing so hard you're squeezing the heart which pushes blood to the brain carrying oxygen keeping the brain viable. Brain cells die at the rate of 10% a minute and never get replaced so, the, so doing this keeps the brain from dying, the brain cells from dying, which makes uh, uh, survival much more difficult. If you don't do anything in this instance, it's like a 4% chance of survival. But doing this greatly increases this person's chance of survival. Um, one last statistic, 70% of sudden cardiac arrests happen in a home. So if you're watching this and you learn how to do CPR, if you ever use it, it's going to be more likely to be used on a family member, somebody that you know, somebody in your, in your home. So it's important for everybody to know the basics, which is call 911, start the compressions. Anytime a friend or loved one is hurt, our first instinct is to help. Hi, my name is Lydia Mackey, and in the next few minutes I'm going to show you hands-only CPR, including how to know if someone needs CPR. I'll show you everything you need to know to help an adult who needs CPR. It's simple. Call 911 and then push hard and fast in the center of the chest. That's it. If you have a remote control for your video player, Keep it near you so you can easily pause to practice or replay anything you want to see again. Before we get started, it's important for you to know that the number one reason people don't give CPR to someone who needs it is that they're afraid of doing CPR wrong. Any CPR is better than no CPR. Your actions can only help. We're going to teach you effective, hands-only CPR, and you'll get many chances to practice. You'll learn how to push hard and push fast so the blood keeps moving until medical professionals take over. As part of your training kit, you received a mini Anne, like this. She'll help you get a feel for how hard and fast to push, but you'll have to get her ready first. Let me show you how. Find the tube of your mini Anne and blow it up, like this. Try to inflate Mini Ann so that it feels firm. When you can't blow any more air into Mini Ann, pinch the tube here to keep the air in while you plug up the end of the tube like this. If you need more time to get Mini Ann ready, just pause the video now. Now Mini Ann is ready. Place Mini Ann in front of you like this. Her chest should be at your knees with her head to one side. Before we begin, let me show you something that will help you know how hard to push. Mini Ann has a built-in clicker. When you press down deep enough, you'll hear a click. Okay, let's get started learning how to help an adult who needs CPR. Watch as I show you how. Position yourself next to the person with his or her chest in front of you. Place the heel of your hand in the center of the chest. Now put the other hand on top, like this. Now you try it. Put the heel of the hand in the center of the chest. 
then place the other hand on top, like this. Now keep your hands in the center of the chest and push hard, straight down. Make sure the chest moves down at least two inches. Then let the chest rise completely back up, like this. You should hear a clicking sound if you're pushing hard enough. Keep pushing a few more times to make sure that you have a feel for how hard you need to push. You're doing great. You're getting the feel for how to do hands-only CPR. Now I want to show you how to figure out if the person really needs CPR in the first place. Let's say we've just arrived at a scene where an adult is laying on the ground. The first thing you should do is tap the person and shout something like, Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? If the person doesn't respond, she's not just sleeping and we better get some help and say it like you mean it. Hey you, call 911 now. If you're alone, you'll have to call 911 yourself. The emergency operator will ask some important questions so that help can be sent quickly and to the right place. Don't hang up the phone unless the emergency operator tells you to. Once you or someone else have called 911, you need to start CPR right away. The victim might be gasping for air. If a person doesn't respond when you tap and shout and is only breathing in gasps, that person needs CPR. Okay, let's do that again. We're going to tap and shout and get help. Are you all right? Can you hear me? Hey you, call 911 now. If she's not breathing or is only gasping, you need to start CPR. Just like you did before, put your hands in the center of the chest and push hard and fast straight down at least two inches. Allow the chest to rise all the way back up after each push. If you keep your arms straight while you push, it makes it a lot easier. Keep pushing until the person starts to respond or until medical professionals take over. Promptly performing CPR increases the chance that a person will survive when his heart stops pumping blood. Often the abnormal heart rhythm that is causing the problem can be corrected by an electrical shock from an automated external defibrillator or AED. An AED is a machine that first reads or analyzes the heart rhythm and then tells you if an electric shock is needed to make the heart beat normally. Many companies in public places now have AEDs in case of an emergency. If one is available, have someone call 911 and bring you the AED. Using an AED is safe. It cannot shock an unresponsive person unless he or she really does need it. Using an AED is also very easy. You only need to remember to turn it on and follow the prompts you see in here. The AED will talk you through each step of its use. Some AEDs will turn on automatically when you lift the lid. Others will require you to push the on button. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. The AED will first tell you to peel the backing off of the adhesive pads and place them on the bare chest in the locations shown by the pictures on the pads, like this. After that, just follow the prompts you see in here. Plug in pads connector. Analyzing heart rhythm. If the victim is an adult, use the adult pads. If the victim is a child, use the child pads if they're provided or the child key or switch, if the AED has one. If the victim is a child and there are no child options, use the adult pads. If you have an AED, use it. It is safe, 
easy and can increase the chance of survival for a person whose heart has stopped pumping blood. A blood donation van here. Um, it comes every six months from the Massachusetts General Hospital and it's really quick and easy to donate blood. It only takes about 10 minutes to actually donate so it's super quick and you're going to be saving a lot of lives and it's something that everyone should do. Um, it's it, there's no like pain involved. It's uh, just really easy. So, so, um, so I just wanted to ask you how your blood pre uh, blood donation process went. It was wonderful. I mean, one should give blood regularly, maybe every two years, three years. Um, this is a big donation you can do to mankind. Um, process inside was extremely, extremely simple, very easy. They make you a set of questions. You answer them honestly and correctly and then they guide you along the process there's no pinching there's no stabbing nothing on that lines yeah. very easy and you just pump the ball and give it the amount of blood you need to give so it's really really good to mankind to save mankind and to work with mankind